welcome back guys you join me here today in the comfort of the w126 also known as the second generation mercedes s-class also also known as the longest running s-class in production 12 long years from 1979 to 1991 before i talk too much about this car can we just take a moment to gawk at this exquisite interior i mean it's just amazing this has got to be one of the nicest interiors i've been in the velour the blue leather the thick blue carpets and the contrasting walnut wood it's pure class even saddam hussein's w126 has the same trim <laughs> but this car is in a much better condition and don't get me started on all the controls and touch points. Oh wow, this is what ergonomics should truly be about. The satisfaction and feedback you get from doing something as simple as pushing a switch. So tactile, so rewarding. Honestly, I think the Germans are the masters of creating the most tactile switches and controls. From cameras to record players to cars, they always had an amazing cohesive tactility and feedback. Unfortunately, it seems to be a dying art that I think the younger generation is really missing out on, especially since the introduction of the iPhone. Now everything is touchscreen and capacitive, soulless, just soulless. Okay, sorry for the depressing note. Let's get back to the car. I know this is a voice over, but I'm actually recording it while sitting in the back seat of the car. <sighs> Such a nice place to be seated in. I mean, it's no wonder that this generation of the S-Class took six years to develop from 1973 when they first introduced the project W126 all the way to 1979 which coincided with the oil crisis and so it was actually developed to be super aerodynamic and more fuel efficient than the first generation S-Class the W116 so let me tell you this 4.2 liter M116 Aluminum V8 is actually very economical. <laughs> Who am I kidding? It's thirsty as hell. I've only driven it a few days and it's already cost me a fortune. And what's even more ridiculous is that this isn't even a screaming V8. Most of the time the car doesn't even want to rev past 2000 RPM. Occasionally I'll reach 2500 RPM and very rarely do I feel like getting past that? I mean, what is this engine doing? Is it just dumping fuel out the exhaust? Where does it all go? When you look at the engine choices offered for the W126, you are reminded that the car is from a totally different era. In this single chassis, it was offered with 10 different engine choices. That's impossible in 2022. Now you even have an entire car company offering only one engine choice. Hi Volvo, I'm talking to you. The W126 was offered from the smallest 2.6 liter inline six all the way to the largest 5.6 liter V8. I cannot imagine how thirsty those would be. You would have to be a chic to own something like that. Don't get me wrong though, despite how ridiculously thirsty this engine is, it is actually very charismatic and a well-mannered whale of an engine. Let me explain. You start with the delicate Mercedes keys hidden in a black leather holster with a discreetly embossed Mercedes-Benz logo that you can feel, but it's barely visible. It's discreet and I like it. Not showy like today's car-shaped keys. Ugh, go put it up your ass, Taycan owners. You turn the ignition on and the engine bursts to life. Ah, 
It's a wonderful sound, a confident sound, and a reassuring sound. It always cranks the same amount of times before the engine fires up. This is Mercedes quality. Over-engineering demonstrated in a flick of the wrist. Unlike the V8s in performance cars, this V8 is built for luxury. It idles like it's not there. Is the engine even on? Sometimes I'm not even sure. The V8 is buttery smooth. It also has instant torque. If you stab the throttle in a parking lot, it's actually quite easy to get the wheels to chirp. But here is where the genius of the ergonomics of this car comes into play. The designers made the throttle pedal quite heavy. And it gets heavier the deeper you press it, very slightly increasing in resistance. You want to drive fast? Then you have to be deliberately pressing hard on the throttle. Otherwise, please, just chill out and drive it like a gentleman. Drive it like you are chauffeuring someone important. So does that mean this engine is lifeless? Maybe it's better off if I just swap an electric drivetrain. I mean, in theory, that would make the car more refined and more comfortable, right? No, no, no. This engine is very smooth, yes, but it also provides a soulful element to the car. You can feel the engine in the throttle pedal. I know it sounds weird, but it provides a tingling sensation which varies depending on how much gas you give it. This feedback feels very organic, almost as if the engine is acknowledging your command to get a move on. Then there is the noise. Normally, what type of noises do you associate with a soulful V8? Maybe you'd want to hear a lumpy idle, or a screaming top end, or mechanical noises of the valve train, or a throaty intake noise. Well, the M116 engine ticks none of these boxes. Instead, it makes a very pleasant whooshing bellow that's audible enough even for the rear passenger to hear, but not at all distracting or unpleasant. None of the noises I mentioned above, which normally would make you want to push the engine harder. No, this engine bellow is very calming and sanative. When paired with this very old school four speed torque converter gearbox, it feels lazy and relaxed. You have no incentive to push it. And I mean that in a good way. This is one of those cars that I actually prefer driving slowly. Even though it has sufficient torque, 335 Newton meters of it. Interestingly, there is also a drive mode selection toggle near the gear selector. You can switch between S and E. And no, of course S doesn't stand for sport. That would be so inappropriate. S here stands for standard and E for economical. If you ask me, I can barely feel the difference between the two. And so I just leave it in standard. In fact, the toggle is actually kind of nice to play with. When I'm bored in traffic, I like to fiddle with it like a fidget toy. So what about the way this car drives? Well, it's extremely comfortable. But the W126 didn't reinvent the suspension. For the most part, it kept the original design of the previous S-Class, the 116. And so this luxury car experience is very different to the modern S-Class. And that is why it is so charming. This suspension has a fluidity to it. I think this characteristic comes from a combination of long suspension travel, thick sidewalls, and old damping technology. This car is able to smooth out most undulations on the road, but it does so kind of like a boat. When you go over imperfections, the suspension actually oscillates very slightly before it settles. Don't get me wrong, it is by no means uncomfortable. In fact, it actually feels relaxing like a yacht riding waves. 
This combined with the springy plush seats make you just want to take it easy and waft where the road brings you. Speaking of the seats, I am a huge fan of this velour trim. It's so cozy sitting in here. And have you seen this massive armrest to my left? It's so comfortable. When you sit in this seat, you feel like you are sunken in it, like a beanbag. It doesn't have the firmness of modern seats, no, no. In this car, you are lounging. And the velour offers a warm and fuzzy feeling like you're being hugged by a teddy bear. Every time I finish a drive in this car, I get out and I feel super relaxed. So how does this car handle? I don't think this is a relevant question for this car. It basically doesn't want to be pushed hard. You get the sense that it just wants to take it easy. You know how most modern cars, if you start to corner hard, the tires usually start to give up first, typically with an audible understeering tire squeal? Well, in the W126, you get the feeling that the chassis wants to give up first. You get this sensation that the car is going to fall out of the corner. Making the car corner hard is just not right. It feels totally oh unnatural God. and you feel dirty and sinful doing it. So don't do it. The steering, it is typical of classic Mercedes. Firstly, I love the texture of the steering wheel. I'm sorry, but I don't know what it's called. For now, let's just call it elephant scrotum. It's very nice and tactile. But I really don't have much to say about the steering feel. When you change directions, there is a noticeable slop. Not such a big deal if you're taking it easy, but if you're somehow inappropriately pushing it into a corner and you suddenly need to make mid-corner adjustments, it can be quite scary when your initial few degrees of correction is left unanswered by the car. Finally, we have the brakes. The brakes are probably the biggest surprise to me. They are excellent. Not just excellent for an old car, they are actually really good for today's standards. Now, I'm not talking about stopping power or having great heat capacity. No, because those factors are irrelevant for a car like this. I'm talking about braking feel and progressiveness. It's got a great linearity to it. Nicely weighted, very easy to modulate and determine your braking distance. It's just very instinctive and smooth. The weight of the pedal is also very cohesive with the rest of the car. And of course it is. They are the master of ergonomics. This is actually the fourth classic Mercedes I have driven. And all of them have had very nice brakes. You won't believe it, but after I drove this car for a few consecutive days, I hopped back into my Toyota Fortuner. The Fortuner actually felt way more athletic than this W126. All of a sudden, this ladder frame seven seater SUV is making me drive like an asshole again. The W126 has really made me appreciate cars that encourage you to drive slow, rewards you to drive slow, relaxes you and make you a better person. <laughs> it made me realize I need a car like this because all my cars are fizzy as fuck. What I need now is a warm and fuzzy car, a fuzzy motor that is probably going to be better for my health. I can understand now why the W126 was a huge success. I mean, they sold nearly 900,000 cars in its production lifetime. In fact, this car was so successful that Toyota used it as their benchmark for their new luxury brand at the time, Lexus. That's right, the W126 and also in part the BMW E32 7 Series were the points of inspiration for their history-altering car, the 
LS400. After the Lexus was launched, Mercedes basically shot themselves and had to go back to the drawing board to rethink their design philosophy. It forced the Mercedes to stop over-engineering everything and focus more on high-precision engineering and cost-saving engineering. In some ways, I guess you can say that this is one of the last old-school Mercedes, and that is what makes this a truly special and soulful car. Soulful car. Cheesy. I know. But what I mean is a car that offers feedback and tactility. It's very easy to find these properties on a sports car because in a sports car you want feedback and tactility. But it's very difficult to find the right balance of feedback and tactility when it comes to a luxury car. And I think the W126 aces this balance and manages to be both luxurious and soulful at the same time. I really hope cars like this do not become extinct, but I still have some hope because you can see analog photography is having a comeback. And we all know that vinyl records are increasing in sales every year. So maybe once all this EV hype settles, there will be more and more people craving some old school feel in new cars. Maybe someone will find a way to engineer some soul into future generations of EVs. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.